Okay, in that case, we can start. Uh, last session, we covered up until this point, which was the idea is to replace uh, all of your pooling layers with convolutions with different strides. And the idea was that, uh, is it actually doable? The answer is yes, you can do that. You can replace your pooling layers with convolutions. The other question is, are you actually gonna lose accuracy doing so? And the answer is no. Sometimes it helps, sometimes it hurts a little bit, but uh, it's as good as putting a, a pooling layer. Any questions about this? Okay, perfect. Now the idea is, okay, we came up with a neural network. Now let's try to visualize it and see what the neural network is thinking about and try to use the methods that we learned up until this point. And the paper actually did that, but there is a catch. The visualizations that came out of the deconvnet process didn't look that much good. They also, the ones coming out of backpropagation also didn't came, came out good. They, let, they didn't look good. And the reason is you're actually, the only change that they did was actually changing from replacing a, a pooling layer with convolutions. So the answer should be in the pooling layer. Maybe there is something special about pooling layer. And the answer is yes, indeed. Something is special about your pooling layers. What they do is they are gonna help you condition on your input image. So don't worry about this figure yet. I will go through it. So they are gonna condition on the input image. You take your input image, you push it through your convolutional neural networks. Whenever there is a max pooling, you store the locations of where the maximum happened. These are your switches. And then you go forward in your neural network. Now that you want to visualize, you're gonna go backward. And whenever you see an uh, unpooling layer, you're gonna use the locations that you already stored in memory. And those locations are actually conditioning the backward pass on your input image. Without them, you are visualizing the generic features, your weights and biases or whatever operations that are happening from one layer above to the layer below. You are just visualizing them, which are generic. They are not image dependent. So is there a way to fix that? So it means that we have to go deeper into understanding what backpropagation was doing, what deconvnet was doing, and try to fix that, and try to somehow condition those operations on the input image. What is the generic framework for visualization? You take an input image, you push it through your convolutions. In the end, you're going to end up with a feature map. Then you want to visualize one of your one of your neurons, or perhaps uh, an entire slice of your feature map. Whatever that you want to visualize, you keep the same value, and whatever that you don't want to visualize, you set them to be zero, and then you do your backward pass. And the way that you do your backward, the convolutions are fine. We know how to invert them. We know how to take their derivatives for uh, max pooling. Our neural network doesn't have any max pullings, so we just removed everything. The only catch is then how you're handling your nonlinearity, your activation. Let's take a look at your activation from one layer to the next one, and let's use your ILU, which is just maximum of your activation and zero. What backpropagation does is take its derivative, which is going to be an indicator function. Whenever your input is positive, just copy and paste from layer above to the layer below. So let's go ahead and look at this visualization now. So you have your forward pass from one layer to the next one. You have your ReLU, and ReLU is gonna set these values to be zero. Whatever that's negative, it's gonna end up being zero. And whatever that's positive, it's gonna stay positive. That's the forward pass, that's this activation. The backward pass, the back propagation, is gonna look at your input and whenever you had a zero, you're just going to set that to be zero. And whenever that's positive, you're going to keep those values. You're just going to copy and paste from layer above to the layer below. So the negative two survives. Three, because there is a zero up there, it's going to get zeroed out. Negative one survives. Six survives. Negative three and one, they're going to disappear. They're going to end up being zero after this operation. So that's what backpropagation doing. Deconvnet was actually looking at the uh, input from layer above and going to, to the layer below 
and then having an indiv indicator function based on that, based on your input. Actually, you can think of it based on your output. Let's see how it is processing things. You still have these derivatives or these feature maps from layer above. These are your Rs. Now you want to go backward. Whenever these are negative, you're just going to zero them out. The other ones, you're just going to copy and paste. Okay, so far so good. But none of these visualizations are going to work for when you removed all of your uh, switches and all of your max pullings. So it's not going to be conditioned on your image. To condition it on the input image, you're just going to use a combination of backpropagation and deconf net. So you're, you're just going to say, I'm, I'm not only going to look at my input, I'm also going to look at my output, have an indicator function on both of them, and then use that to copy from one layer above to layer below. And that's exactly what's happening here. These are all going to get zeroed out. Some of them are based on your input, the red ones. Some of them are based on your output. And then the rest of them, you're just going to copy. Six and three, you're going to copy. And this way, you're conditioning on your input image because it depends on these activities that are a result of your forward propagation. This is a visualization of your conv three feature maps, a visualization of maybe conv five deeper into your neural network is going to give you more information about what the neural network is looking at. For instance, in this case, it's looking at the face of this person. I think I'm going to stop here and let you guys ask questions. Are there any? So was everything clear? Okay. So I want you guys to remember this guided back propagation. We are going to refer to this later on.